Hey everyone, this is Reese. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This week on the podcast, we're going deep into the history of Earth Day. It's the 50th anniversary and we have a really special episode lined up. But we also want to keep you up to speed on the general ocean and climate news. So with me for a sort of pseudo episode of Flotsam and Jetsam is our friend Kim Hogan. Kim, how are you doing? Great. <laughs> um, where are you? Quarantine? I'm in my apartment. Yes, in Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles, California, USA. Nice, nice. Um, are you excited about Earth Week? I'm so excited about Earth Week. What I it, have been what, composting. You've been composting? <laughs> Tell me more about this composting. Well, I have a bucket. <laughs> it's me and my bucket in here in my apartment. <laughs> yeah, I have a bucket. Um, and I've been throwing my food scraps in there along with some little little paper bits, some little trimmings from my plants. And so are you composting everything that you have or are you just composting a little bit or what? Um, not everything. So I, um, I've been composting like little veggie bits and stuff and right. I put it in a blender first because in my cursory research online, it said that it helps if things are in the smallest bits that they can be. And so yeah. I just throw all of that shit in the blender, blend it up and then shove it into my bucket. And then I roll my bucket around like once a, once a day. That can be part of your quarantine everything. workout routine as well. <laughs> you can like lift the bucket and shake yeah, it and lifting stuff. Lifting it, squats and squats with the bucket. You could, I mean, I guess you could also use it to as like a foam roller. It's kind of big, but um, yeah. So I've been, I've been on a compost journey. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think what's cool about you doing composting is that, you know, a lot of people feel that they have to go all in and compost everything, but it seems you've taken just, you're just trying to do enough to give your plants some, and it seems like why go buy yeah. compost at a garden store when you can make it at home. And so right. I think that's well, one of the cool things with this whole quarantine is like tackling those little projects. Totally. And I don't like, I've always felt a little bit iffy about the food that I buy for my plants because I have a lot of plants and mm -hmm. it's just like weird. It's like this little blue sand kind of stuff. And it's like, what is this? What is it? Blue sand? Yeah. And so um, I ditched that. And so now I'm just giving them like the food that I eat. So it's like, um, <laughs> it's like those fancy dogs where people like cook meals for their dog, special <laughs> dog food. So I feel like I'm doing that. For my At my parents' restaurant growing up, we had a special <laughs> ordering button on the computer for this one couple that would, they had a dog named Princess. And yeah. we had a princess button that was a special order that we made for people who ordered food for their dogs, wow. specifically for this couple. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's me, but for my plants. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But I love that you're just tackling like something that you can do even at home. I mean, it's, it's kind totally. of a bummer that this is Earth Week and normally it's a week about getting out and going to rallies and events and being together and all that. And unfortunately, due to COVID-19, that can't happen. And that's the right call. For sure. Um, I don't think that people should be uh, gathering in mass for Earth Day. Um, but I do think there's a lot that people can do online. You know, there's a lot of like cool webinars out there. There's a bunch of live streams going on. We're actually going to link to a bunch of them at wcl.tv slash Earth Day and provide that for everybody. So if you're listening at home, um, you know, go to wcl.tv slash Earth Day. We've got a bunch of stuff that's going on this week and then a bunch of tips that you can do. Yeah. Um, you know. What about that podcast, though? Can you tell me more about it? It's cool. It, yeah, you weren't on this one. Um, I'm pretty I proud know. of it. <laughs> my composting. I didn't make the cut. Well, you know, <laughs> Cody has really stepped up in terms of leading the creative and, and producing this episode, as have Kayla and John and Bucci and Fawcett. Totally. The team at WSL good, really worked yeah. hard because this was a big episode for us. We actually we interviewed five different people, including two of our pro surfers. We really went deep into the history and the reporting of Earth Day. and it's, it's interesting. It has this crazy little backstory that's tied to a surfing community that we all know and love. And I think it's so fascinating that some people have no idea, like, how did Earth Day get its start? Like, where did this come from? And the environmental disaster that actually kicked it all off. So I really encourage people to listen. It should be, should be a cool episode. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's get into the news this week because uh, it's very relevant. Off the bat, um, this one, of course, our ocean news somehow always leads back to Florida. It's always it does. Florida. Our but, beloved um, peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, when we're recording this, is uh, the 10 year uh, anniversary of the Deepwater Horizon disaster down in the Gulf, which was a massive oil spill. 
Um, were you in Florida at the time or do you remember it or do you know people who were affected by it? Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't in Florida at the time. I was living in New York, but I was um, in college and had a ton of friends still in Florida um, who are super impacted by it. And I think like um, a lot of times with ocean stuff, we think of it, we're, we're so separate from it because it's not, you know, it's not directly affecting us. But with something like this oil spill, it directly affected almost everyone that I knew in Florida. Um, from people who worked at restaurants to like my friend who runs this parasailing boat to my parents who are in insurance like there was there, everyone was affected by it um, and it's kind of extraordinary considering the headline says um, there's no lessons that have been learned right yeah like, the nothing report from changed. Oceana yeah. is saying like we didn't learn a lot from it yeah, which is incredibly disappointing and discouraging, <laughs> discouraging in so many ways. Um, and I think that like, yeah, just knowing so many people who are affected by it, um, specifically their jobs and the economy is like just another proof point that all of these um, environmental crises and disasters affect more than just, um, you know, just the ocean bottom or just those creatures. It affects everyone and everything and it affects the economy and our livelihoods. Um, and I think that's the biggest sort of chunk here yeah i mean it's all connected right like that, yeah. that's just that that little phrase that you can echo back to rachel carson or some people attribute it attributed to john muir kind of um incorrectly the way he's let's quoted, give it to rachel <laughs> rachel um you know famously said in nature um uh it's all connected no in nature everything is connected um and so what you're saying is like it's not just about the seabirds or the fish that die it's the economy it's everything and I think that's what we're seeing now COVID-19 is the same thing it's like whoa you have this this little disease and virus outbreak in one place and boom world economies sinking and jobs lost and lives lost and so you know we really need to think about systems that are more sustainable and don't pose so much risk and offshore drilling okay. is risky um, because when it does go wrong, it goes really, really wrong. Right. Um, but there's some good news around the oil and gas industry. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people rethinking this whole industry and the opportunity that COVID-19 presents to make change and make changes for the better in the future. And, and there's one little bit of good news is that um, a U.S. judge has canceled the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline from Canada. Have you yeah. tracked any of this news? Um, just a little bit. I think that... Um yeah, I, really just a little, but it's one of those very exciting things that <laughs> I feel like is happening because um, I think we, I don't know, we've talked about it before, but all of these little sort of things that are happening in the background um, in our government sort of while we're all paying attention to the COVID news. Um, and this one is really exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> this super one positive. I feel like it's like a positive one, yeah. For sure. I mean, listen, this is probably it's still a long battle that will go on for a long time, but ultimately... Um, you know, one thing that's been really disappointing has been some of the legislation that's been put in place to try to uh, criminalize protesting and make it illegal for people to protest projects like this, which is crazy because we should have the right to protest, you know, especially right. things like this. And they say, well, it's critical infrastructure. But I think being recognized in the courts and the courts saying, hey, hang on, we're, this is not right. This is not properly done, didn't follow the proper rules. It's endangering the sturgeon, which is an endangered species, right. you know, so we need to do things the right way. I, I really like to see wins in court and the legal side of things. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see this one. This is a good win for the overall movement for now. Yeah. And I think another example of, um, of sort of people organizing for a cause and that paying off. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, gotta like, I love highlighting the wins, right? Because like, it, it does news. work. It doesn't, it doesn't always win. People, this is good news. <laughs> are we are we riffing off John Krasinski? This is the yeah. some environmental good news show. <laughs> yeah, S we will spin it all to be good. <laughs> Segn. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, some more good news around the environment. The Evergreen Collaborative uh, is this cool new initiative, and it's a lot of the Jay Inslee, Elizabeth Warren camp, their staffers who were like the best climate staffers out there, have now sort of reformed this super group called the Evergreen Collaborative, and they put out the Evergreen Action Plan, basically saying like, here's what we need to do to nationally mobilize for our climate, especially in the wake of COVID-19. Yeah, a bunch of nerds coming together at this time. <laughs> Why are you going to call them nerds? Why are they nerds? Everybody's a nerd for this stuff. <laughs> They're all a bunch of nerds, a bunch of rad nerds. I'm a nerd too. It's like, just call them like a zoo. <laughs> Listen, I mean, being a nerd, it's, I don't think it's nerdy. It's not nerdy. It's cool. 
I think, um, <laughs> no, I mean, they're one and the same. Totally. So <laughs> you have some really, really smart people though. I mean, Jay yeah. Inslee, who, um, you know, ran for the U S presidential, uh, uh, spot uh, on the democratic side had the best climate plans. And then when he dropped out of the race, Elizabeth Warren actually adopted his plans into her plans and then awesome. went above and beyond with the blue new deal on top of the green new deal, which is super cool. Right. She thought, okay, well, not just, on uh, terra firma here, but let's think about the oceans as well. We need to plan for the oceans related to climate. And then her team continued on. Uh, unfortunately, she dropped out, but her staff and Jay Inslee staffers have now said, here's a plan for everyone to adopt. And what we're seeing is, unfortunately, you know, that sort of uh, climate forward candidate didn't happen. Bernie ended up, you know, dropping out. But now they're all working with Biden to ramp up his plans to help push the whole agenda forward and, and like without even getting into, you know, who your can your favorite candidate is or was, or who's going to, you know, win in the fall. That's what we need to do is we need to push and push and push so that everyone agrees like this is the real deal. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I would have loved to have seen a really climate forward candidate um, get to the office, but I'm happy to see that the staffers persist. Like they just continue yeah. on. Totally. And I think that that's a, it's a really great example of, um, of a leader sort of um, taking the smartest people in the room and acknowledging that it might not be them about something like climate and saying, hey, I would like to adopt your plan because you are the expert in that. And then hopefully that's sort of making its way into, um, you know, into Biden's camp and into his, his campaign, because these are all things that we absolutely need to be moving forward with. Um, and so the idea that this is going to be adopted is really exciting. That's a great note on leadership. I mean, I think so often there's so much ego tied up in plans and projects and all that right. sort of stuff. But like the best ideas come from the best teams and the best collaboration. Um, you know, I, I just think it's really important that no one gets too, you know, egocentric around their plans. We need to push right. forward the agenda as a team. Absolutely. And what's best for what's best for everyone, right? If that's what's best for everyone, which it is, and because that's, you know, it, it's just, it's what's right. Um, yeah. Then that's what we should be moving forward with. And I think a good leader um, acknowledges that. For sure. And yeah. some of the leadership we're seeing in some of our cities, our final story out of Wired is about yeah. how certain cities are trying to rethink, like, how do we redo our cities, right? I mean, if no one's driving around, we're here in LA, right? The air quality has been awesome lately Insane. I mean, I, Annie and I my wife and I go for walks and we're like look at the mountains look how clear you can see the mountains I never realized you could see them from where we are I, I know I, I don't know where I was this weekend um it's like I go out like once and I don't remember where I'm at um and I was I was I saw mountains from a, and I didn't know like you just said I didn't know that you had a view of the mountains from there and yeah. now I think in the wake of this I'm realizing that Los Angeles you can see mountains from everywhere perhaps except I think south facing and it's this like incredible realization that like the the Palisades to the north and then all the way at the east it's just there's mountains everywhere and it's stunning. It's amazing and I love it and I don't want to go back to how we were. Yeah, for those you know uh, who aren't familiar with LA, we, we're not <laughs> knuckleheads who don't realize that the mountains are there. It's just that you normally can't see them on the on day on the day to day. Like I mean, no, no, as like long curtains. as I've been here, there's like a <laughs> curtain. Yeah. It's yeah. So really so cool. cities are being yeah. rethought because now you have you have less people people driving. So then can you open those streets up to more bike lanes to pedestrians? Can yeah. you turn on? walk signals on automatically. So one, you don't need to touch a walk signal just to get across the road, but think, right. you know, in these ways that are more sustainable, healthier. Um, it's really exciting. I don't know. I, I would, I would love to see, you know, these plans continue to move forward so we can design our cities to, you know, take advantage of this, this giant pause, you know, the power of pressing pause on the way we've been living our lives for Absolutely. a long time. Yeah. And I think that's really the best way to spend this time, right? Is like if you if you're privileged enough to sort of have downtime right now is to think about um, what this will look like once we sort of restart or whatever that looks like a soft restart, you know, do you on the two days a week that you go to your office, take the train or a bus, yeah. you know, what does that look and feel like or ride your bike instead of just going right back to the way you did things before? Yeah, for sure. I think we've all learned that we can do a lot of things remotely. We've all learned yeah. that, you know, when other products are in short supply, you know, okay, how do I figure a workaround for that? How do I fix the thing that's broken instead of going out and buying a new one? And, totally. you know, I, I'm, I'm loath to ever pin stuff on our individual action as the ultimate solution to climate change and the climate crisis. But there is a lot we can do as individuals, you know, then that's the type of stuff we need to do if we all act 
collectively, um, it does add up. So I, I love that it's forced people to get creative. Um, you know, say what you will about the sourdough movement, but I think <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a movement? What is it? Is it a sourdough epidemic or I don't know. I just know that, I just know that everyone's run out of flour because everyone's baking bread, including my wife. <laughs> um, I think well. We're no longer just completely inept in the kitchen. We're sort of um, now discovering that we in fact can make things ourselves. Like, you know, just sort of two generations ago, you know, our grandparents were baking bread and um, doing all these things on, on their own. And, and we sort of lost touch with that. And I think it's, it's kind of beautiful. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Kim. Um, uh, it was always, always fun to catch up. Good to see your, your Thank digital you. face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, I really appreciate it. Do check out wsl.tv slash earth day for some tips and uh, links to webinars and resources, places you can learn, things you can do from the comfort of your own home, um, as well as check out our podcast episode. We're really excited. It's going to be releasing on Wednesday. And um, yeah, happy Earth Day, everyone. Thanks. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.